This is Twit. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed today in Uber News. BuzzFeed reports that the company is suspending drivers who have registered their cars as commercial vehicles. This comes only weeks after the Department of Motor Vehicles in California issued a public clarification on their website saying that even occasional use of a vehicle commercially requires the vehicle to be registered commercially. A spokesperson from the DMV emphasized that this is not a new law to target Uber. It's only a clarification of a law that's been on the books since 1935. And at the same time, Uber is insisting their drivers don't register their cars as commercial vehicles in California. Over in India, Uber is in business again. And according to Engadget, the company was reinstated by applying for a taxi service license. So they're a taxi service with a bunch of people driving their non-commercial vehicles. I get it. Uber has been out of business in India for only a month after the alleged rape of a passenger by an Uber driver. Apple will allow China's State Internet Information Office to conduct random security audits on Apple products sold in China. The Chinese government demanded such access to verify that iPhones and other Apple products aren't being used by foreign governments for surveillance. Apple CEO Tim Cook told a Chinese publication that the company is not providing backdoor access to users' personal data. In other Apple news, Google's Project Zero security team unmasked three severe and unfixed vulnerabilities in Apple's OS X operating system. All three require physical access to a target Mac. Google reported the flaws to Apple in October, but because they haven't been fixed within Google's 90-day Project Zero time limit, they have now been made public. Earlier this week, we reported that Google has been been doing the same thing to Microsoft, but I guess they decided to pick on someone else since, have you heard, Microsoft is cool again. Holograms. Here's an update on a story we've reported this week about healthcare.gov releasing our personal information to third parties. Today, the Obama administration announced that the site would no longer release information about applicants' age, income, zip code, tobacco use, and pregnancy results. Cooper Quinton, a staffer with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, called it a great first step, but said the administration needs to do more. The administration is aiming to have more than 9 million people signed up at healthcare.gov by February 15th. 